What's up, JD Aliens? Look, recently, since I got my new Galaxy Note 10 Plus, I've been doing a lot of gaming. And I've always wanted to purchase a, uh, a controller pad or a gaming pad for mobile gaming. But up until now, I never really thought any of them were worth it because of one thing or another. Let's do it. So after scouring the internet for years, I finally found two that were worth my money. One of these bad boys is going back because there's only one that I think is truly worth it, even though they both have their pros and cons. So let's start with one that I've seen that's been really popular called the Bibbon Cool Sataki uh, Wireless Gaming Mapping Controller. So this one is really cool because uh, it can probably work with any game you can find on the uh, on the App Store, whether it's uh, Android or iOS. It does have an app that you have to use with it to uh, remap everything, but we'll talk about that in a moment once we get into the in-depth stuff. This could be a long video, so hang in there with me, guys. So taking a little field trip around this thing, uh, we look at the ergonomics first. So the ergonomics seem to be okay once you uh, wrap your hands around it. It seems like it's going to be okay. The reason why I emphasize the word seems is because uh, once you start playing, you'll realize how cramped the controls really are. But let's go ahead and take a look around. We've got a little bit of ergonomics going right here with this curve, how it fits in the palm of your hand, and that really does feel good. The triggers are in the right spots. They're very close to each other, so that makes it convenient. They're super clicky, but at the same time, they feel kind of spongy at the end of it. Like after you hear that click, oh, can you see that? After you hear that click, you can feel some sponginess in there. So it doesn't seem very solid. This seems like one of those controllers that once you get into the game and you just punching the hell out of these buttons, you know, you're gonna end up punching one and it's not gonna spring back up. I don't wanna say the controller feels cheap because in the, in the world of mobile controllers, this is probably one of the best feeling ones as far as the kind that you put your phone into. Uh, it's definitely one of the best feeling ones, but at the same time, I worry about long-term hardcore use. You can see the D-pad right here, how it's all one piece. And uh, that's cool, it's one piece under there, but it, it kind of makes it look like it's four different uh, buttons there. But as you can see, it's all rocking at the same time. Now, both of these joysticks feel really, really good. They're both solid and they both have a button in them. So you can actually use that as a button if you wish, but they feel really solid. As far as the rest of the buttons, I don't know, man. And you, you see what I just did there? That little red LED came on. From what I know, uh, if you press and hold the iOS or press and hold the Android button right here, you will actually get it to power on. But there is something I did over here that powered this bad boy on and it says iOS. So I'm not really sure how to turn this thing on or off and leave it there. I think like anything can trigger it to come on. So right now it's set in the, uh, iOS mode, but you have Android, iOS, HID, and that's your charging indicator right there. Then you got a reset pinhole right here. But as far as functionality, let's open this thing up. Now, once you open it, it does become a little bit flimsy. Right here, it's not so bad, all right? It's, it's not that bad, but it does feel a little bit flimsy right there. And I am kind of pushing on this because, you know, that's kind of how it gets when you get into the game, man. You be gripping on it and, you know, you kind of, you hear all that? You hear, yeah. Okay, so let's slide the Galaxy Note 10 Plus in there. And it fits, man. It's like it was made for this thing, man. It fits perfectly. Wait a minute, what's going on here? Ah, there we go. Okay, so it fits in there, but you can see this big gap right here. I don't know if you can see that big gap. That big gap right there and see how it flexes. I'm not a fan of how it flexes on there. So while you're playing, you get a lot of flex in there while you're playing. I don't know if that's gonna bother some of you guys, but it bothered the heck out of me as I was playing games. I just felt like I was gonna break this thing as I got into the games. Another thing is, you can still hear your speakers really loud, but my speakers are mounted right here. These are not front firing speakers, so they're getting covered up in this little pocket right here. And you can still hear them, it's just the fact that everything's getting covered up, like the speakers and the mics and stuff. So there's really no, uh, uh oh. So there's really nowhere for that sound to escape, but you can still hear them and you'll, you'll hear in just a second. But there's nothing really more physically I can say about this thing, except you got this flex here, which, ah, man, it's getting on my nerves right now. And this is, obviously you can tell this is the one I'm probably not gonna keep. But now that we got this thing set up in game mode, you can see how this thing can get just a little cramped. Now right here with these triggers, everything is lovely. I love how close they are together and I love how easy these buttons are to press without having to wiggle your hand and reposition around again. But here, 
when you're pressing your buttons, you have this, this toggle down here and it's just, you know, I feel all this cramping in my thumb when you're having to use that. And there's been several games where I have to use this quite a bit and go back up in here. And yeah, it's just, it's just not spread out enough. Now it's a mobile gaming controller, so it's supposed to be kind of compact, but that's just one of the caveats of having this particular layout where everything's on this small strip right here. And the same goes for right here. But on this hand, you're usually just using one or the other, and it's not that big of a deal. But here you're kind of using both on a lot of different games. Speaking of a lot of different games, I have gone into the app store and downloaded a lot of games. Most of these games were games that I specifically added for the purpose of using the G lap uh, because they just work. And I'll show you that once we get over to this side. But first let's get into this uh, shooting plus V3 app. You must download this app uh, to use with this bad boy because that allows you to remap. Now let me just hold this Android button and get the Android light to come on and then they'll get connected. It says it's connected. So it's a quick pair up and everything. And there's really no latency in here. And as far as gameplay, you're good to go. You're not gonna have any lag or anything like that. So what happens is, let's go into, uh, what game did I have on here? Okay, this is Modern Combat 5. Let's, okay, you can hear the speakers. Let me turn this up a little bit more. You can definitely hear the speakers. Let me turn it down now. You can definitely hear the speakers, but you can tell they're a little bit muffled because it's covered up by this, this side piece right here. So if you hit this view button, you get to view your map, okay, for everything you have. But if you hit the edit button, it will allow you to edit all of your buttons. So we got Y right here, and you see how it's let me slide can you see that? Can you see how it's let me slide all these buttons where I want them to be? So your trigger you can put up here. Let me put my Y. Where's the Y go? Right up there. Then I'll put my B over here. Then I'll put my A down here and my X right there. And that way it corresponds with everything on the, on the pad. So when you want to add a new button, all you have to do, let me add this trigger. This is the right trigger. It comes up and it's right there. Okay, so while this game is playing, if I hit the button, it'll allow me to, if I want my trigger to be here, I'll just put it right on top of the trigger. And let me see here. Oh, I'm getting shot up big time, man. If I want my grenade to be there, I'll just put the A there. So that's the grenades. What you just saw is one of the caveats of this. So I got this game plan and I'm having to remap everything to where it's supposed to be. So yes, it is very remappable and I'm gonna go ahead and get it done right real quick. That way you can see a, just a tiny little bit of gameplay. Now I could be wrong on this, but for every game you have to map your buttons a different way. And I can't figure out a way to save it per game unless it's somewhere in a cloud somewhere where you can save it. So what I'm doing is I'm putting my left joystick here in the joystick space and I put my tr R trigger two as the uh, the fire and I believe that's the scope so that's R1 and then my grenades is B and I don't think I need this oh I do need that hold on hold on I, I do need that okay so let's put this right here somewhere and then we'll go ahead and save that let's hit okay so it's saving it and now I should be able to move but it doesn't look like I'm able to move what's going on here Uh oh. Okay, that did not work. Something is going on with this thing and I'm glad it's happening live on camera. Let's do a view again so we can see where I put everything. So you can see my left joystick is here where it's supposed to be. My B for grenades is right there and I have my R2, R1. I have everything in the right spot. Let's go to edit just to make double double sure. So yeah, everything's in the right spot and it's actually hooked up to the device. I just checked on my Bluetooth settings. So let's go into my Bluetooth settings real quick. So it says, yeah, you can see it right there. The STK 700F1, it is connected. So let's go back into the game and see if it'll work. Let me close that. All right, it's reconnecting. Now let's just make sure. I'm glad this is happening on camera. Let's resume. All right, I got no action. Let me go ahead and disconnect and turn this bad boy off. Okay, the Android light is off. It should be disconnected. Let me turn it back on and it's connected again. Okay, it says Bluetooth connected, and I got nothing. I, I got nothing. What? What's the deal? Okay, so that's enough of that. Well, this one, it was working before, and now it's kind of spotty, man. <laughs> I'm glad this happened on camera, though. So this is one of the things you might run into as far as playing with this controller, possibly. It, it's happening to me right now, but it's not working. You know what? Let's just try another game. Let me get, let me get out of this game. We'll go to another game, because I want to give this bad boy a fair shot, because it is a decent controller. Okay, I got the edit here. So what happens is, this is, not the, this is the layout for Modern Combat. 
Kombat 5, right? This is not gonna work for this game. So this is what I don't like about this controller. It doesn't really save much unless, I don't know, somewhere maybe in the cloud, but we have to delete all of these things, okay? Let me go ahead and delete the A. Let me delete the B. Okay, so what we're gonna need is, let me get out of here real quick. Oh, I didn't save that. Oh, this is a pain in the butt. You're seeing what a pain in the butt this is. Okay, so I gotta delete all these again. Okay, so let's get into some gameplay. This is a very simple game. It only has a back and forth and it has three buttons right here. So we have to map these, but I'm gonna have to lose a game before I actually uh, am able to map it. So let me start this match. Let me go ahead and continue. I'll start this match up and I'm probably gonna lose as I'm trying to map this thing out. So let me get it started. All this stuff is back. I, I could have swore I hit save. All this stuff is back. Okay, so let's just ignore that. And we will do, we'll do A, we'll do A here, B here, and Y. Yeah, we'll do Y. All right, so we'll put the Y is jump, the B is kick up, and we'll put our directions here and we will save. Okay, so that is mapped and it's it's not working. You know what? Something is up with this controller. Let me, um, give me a moment. I'll, I'll, I gotta turn off the camera and fix this controller. Something is not right. It's just not connected. Guys, I'm sorry, I have tried. It's actually connected. As you can see, it's connected to the screen and it's connected to the phone and everything. I hit save, everything looks to be okay. But as soon as I start to press these buttons, it's just not working with the games. It says paired successfully, blah, blah, blah. And if I hit start touching these, oh, now it's working. Oh, okay, now it's working. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know what the deal is, but it's working now. Okay, but you just saw you know, I was having some trouble. So now we're, we're actually working and you can see, yeah, now it's working. So as you can see, it is working and I do have functionality in here. So let me just jump, kick this ball into the goal. Oh, I love this game, man. This little bobblehead game is crazy. Man, it gets pretty intense too. Ah, dang it, get out of here, man, get out of here. So the controller actually does work. Uh, that was the first time I ever had that problem. I don't know if you're gonna have the problem or not, but the controller does work. And you'll see what, what I'm talking about when you feel the crampedness right here, when you start getting into like shooters and stuff like that, it's very cramped right here. Look how close my thumb is to the rest of my hand. That's just too cramped for me. Now, taking your phone out of here is pretty simple. You just kind of open it up and take it out just like that. And it's, it just snaps shut. So you have no control over that. And the reason why I'm even making a point of that is because once we pick up the GLAT play, uh, you'll see that there's a button back here that can kind of control that. But I want to get into some stuff first. So there's the boxes for everything. And here's a case that you get with the GLAP. Now I failed to mention this, but these things are quite differently priced. This one at the most expensive I've seen it is about 45 bucks. I think I got this one for about 39 actually on Amazon. And then I got this one for like $98 on Amazon. I don't think there's going to be any sales or anything for it, but it also says designed for Samsung. And it works for probably a lot of other things, but I know it is very much designed for these Galaxy uh, Notes and, and S10s and stuff like that. But let me open up this case because it actually is built for the controller. So once you get tired of playing with this bad boy, you can put it up. I have not used the case since I got it, but it just goes in there like that and you got it for safekeeping. It's a rather big case for what it is, but nonetheless you get a case let me take that out of there like i said it's form fitted you get a usb-c charging cable in there and there's your port right there and i forgot to mention that this one is charged via micro usb that's important so it all depends on what kind of cables you want to use one more thing i forgot to mention about the sataki this is a terrible review i know this is not my best but one more thing i did forget to mention is battery life this one is charging via uh, micro usb we got usb-c here but as far as battery life, you got 12 hours on this one and only 10 hours on this one. I say only 10 hours, 10 hours uh, of mobile gaming. That's quite a bit of time <laughs> as far as spending time on your phone gaming, man. But you got 12 here, 10 there. And it's kind of weird because this one has much more space for a bigger battery. So I was wondering why it's like that. I don't know. Maybe it's some of the functionality. It just burns up that battery for the extra two hours. Now off the top, you can see that the GLAP is much bigger. I mean, look at that. That's that's a huge uh, difference in between controllers as, as far as like the profile and the bulk. And you would think you want something small. And yes, a lot of people would want something, you know, rather small as far as their mobile gaming stuff. Let me turn that off again. It keeps turning on by itself. 
All right, so yeah, you would want something small, but here in this case, I really don't care. I'm not throwing this in my backpack all the time and going nowhere. This is just for home, but it's not so big to where you can't take it nowhere. Plus it comes with a case, which is pretty bulky. So if you're gonna travel around with this thing, find a safe place to put it in your bag without the uh, case because it'll travel a lot slimmer that way. So this thing is made for Android and it's got a home button right here. This will be your power button. All you gotta do is hold it and it'll come on or turn off. This is your select button. And this right here is your start button. And they vary depending on which game you're gonna be playing too. So you got your D-pad right here, and then you got your two joysticks up here. Then you got your X, Y, A, B, and then you got your triggers. Uh, right here is where I don't like this. This, I don't know how you're supposed to, supposed to position your hands, maybe like this, right? But this is kind of weird for me. And maybe I'll have to learn how to play like this. I'm not sure, but I normally play like this and that is a lot of space in between those buttons. And it really stretches your hand out once you're trying to reach up there and toggle those two triggers. So maybe you'll have to position your hands like this. I never thought about that, but it fits right in there. So that's kind of perfect. Might have to get used to that. But yeah, but look at the spacing on here. So now we have a lot of space and my hand isn't cramped down here trying to use the controllers. Because it's so big and bulky, we got this, this nice palm size grip right there. You can just rest your thumb right there. It's safe and it's not gonna mess up your hand. And then you got these buttons right here and everything is, the ergonomics in this thing is awesome. Now, as we open and close this thing, you see it stays open right there, but you have this trigger hit that trigger and it closes. And you also have a caution label right there. Don't be pinching your fingers in there. So what happens is you put your phone in there, hit that little trigger on the back, and you see you got these little grooves right here. Can you see those little grooves? That allows for sound to travel out of this thing up into your face if uh, you got these uh, rear or bottom firing speakers like on the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. And I do believe this was actually meant to be used without a case because there's only a little bit, can you see in there? There's only a little bit of a gap. Even if I press the phone down a little bit, there's only a little bit of gap in there. You you can use a glass screen protector, but if you got a bulky case on, that thing has to come off or it's probably not gonna fit in there. It's just gonna, it's just gonna be a real tight fit. Now, as far as the flex, uh, you do have that gap right there where you put it on, but it is nowhere near to the extent of what the uh, the Bivin Cool was. It's just, I mean, this feels like a solid device all the way around. It just, it just feels good in the hand and it doesn't feel, these buttons feel like real controller buttons. Like they are nice and sturdy. There's no sponginess after the click. They feel like real controller buttons. This is where that price tag comes in, man. We're talking like, this is like 45 bucks and this is like double that. So yeah, we're definitely uh, getting our money's worth here as far as build quality. But if you have a Galaxy phone, one of the later Galaxy phones, I gotta tell you, man, this is the one to get because it was. It says it was made for Galaxy and you can see it fits right. It, I mean, it fits the phone perfectly, man. Uh, I've seen some people call this the Galaxy Note 10 controller. Uh, you might as well call it that because it was just made with that in mind and it just feels so doggone good. Now let's get into some gameplay. Now this is not remappable as we know it so what we're gonna have to do here it just it's just plug and play as soon as I turn this thing on let me show you as soon as I turn it on I press and hold this button right here and you see that little blue LED it's on so now let me go in my game launcher there is no mapping which means I can't play certain games with this uh, like the headball too, I can't remap these buttons because they had these funky little controls at the bottom of the screen. I can't remap them, so I can't even play that with this. There's a list of games on the GLAB website, and then there's uh, some other guys that have a list of games that you can play uh, with this controller. Uh, it, it just it's just plug and play man and that's what I like about it so I can't play every game that's where this one shines you can play any game with this most likely because you can remap it but as far as like just turn your thing on and not having to remap for every game yeah you you can't beat this no let me get into this I hate all these like you got to pay for everything it's the only thing I hate about mobile gaming man they want you to buy all the crap now full disclosure i really do suck at shooter games that's just something i'm gonna admit right here on camera but i want you to see some gameplay with this thing it's just plug and go man you just yeah you just shoot and it's just working and that's what i like about it okay let me get this guy real quick all right this guy's on my nerves get him ah, come on now come on okay there you go okay so yeah everything works let me throw a grenade Everything is just already mapped out within the software that's built into the controller. Okay, let's go into Grim Valor. This is one of the games that was on the uh, GLAB website that they said was uh, good for this controller. So let's go ahead and continue the game I was playing. This is a badass game, man. 
Y'all got to download this when you get a chance. All right, see your little character right there. The graphics on this game is just sweet, man. All right, let me, whoa, let me kill this guy real quick. This guy's tripping. All right, so everything is mapped out, man. The controllers are just, the controls are just done right. Everything is mapped out perfect. You don't have to do anything. You just kill demons and zombies. That's just one of the reasons why I favor this one so much is because the games that it's made for, it actually just works for. You don't have to do any remapping. Uh, once I finish playing this game right here for you, I'm gonna show you another little trick that I discovered. Uh, I don't know if you call it a trick, but this is not a one trick pony, man. I'm coming back, I'm coming back. What? Mm. Oh my God. I hate when they knock the, the weapon out of your hand because you're just defenseless against swords and sticks and everything else they got. Dude, I'm getting my, <laughs> oh my God. Okay, let me finish this fight. What? Mm. Come on, man, he's moving so slow. Oh, okay, <laughs> anyways. Well, that was Shadow Fight. Let me pull this out of here, let me open it up. See how it just kind of stays open and lets me take my phone out? This thing, it was a little bit different, it's a little bit more cumbersome. You just kind of take it out that way and it snaps. And so you got all kinds of dangers waiting to happen. And once you're done with this, you can just put it up here, put it in the case or put it down. But I got something else to show you, man. So something cool about this controller is that it feels so sturdy. I mean, look at that, it's not flexing like this one was. So yeah, that's a lot of flex. And you could probably do the same thing with this controller, but this one, you don't even need to have a, uh, a phone in here. You can use this on a tablet if you want to. Let me go into, uh, let me go on asphalt real quick. So if you want a bigger screen, all you gotta do is just plug it up to your Samsung tablet if you got one. So it's not just for the phones. You can actually use this on a tablet. So let me turn it on, get that blue LED flash in. Oh, let me turn on my Bluetooth real quick. Gotta have that Bluetooth on. See, it's flashing there, and then it's gonna stop flashing as soon as it connects. We're connected right there, done. All right, it's connected, and where's my little toggle? Where is it? Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. Okay, so now we're toggling and we can play. Everything just works. There's no remapping or anything. The only bad part about this controller is that it doesn't work with every game. Whereas this one, all you gotta do is remap the controls and you can play any game. But I'm the kind of guy, I got like game OCD. I'll play a game for like 10 minutes and then I'll move on to the next one. And here we are spending the next five minutes trying to remap this thing. But let me get into some gameplay on um, Asphalt 9 and show you how well this controller works with uh, games that need some quick responses. All right, now I never said I could drive either, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> get off my case, man. <laughs> All right, maybe I'll do some gaming for y'all, man. You know what, throw some emoji hands up if you wanna see me do some gaming, some like hardcore gaming on the uh, on the mobile devices or my tablet or something like that. And I'll show y'all what my skills really are because right now I'm kinda of sucking at this. Oh yeah, right up into the mountains. That's how we do it. Mm. Yeah, okay, am I in, damn, I'm in sixth place. Yeah, you can see right here that the controls are very responsive. Ah, give me some turbo, give me that, I need that turbo. The controls are very responsive and this is a great controller that just works and it's just built for what it's built for. Look, this one is about 45 bucks at the highest I've seen it. You can get it for about 30 or 39 or 40 bucks. This one is between 95 and hundred dollars on Amazon. In my opinion, one is definitely better than the other, but I mean, they both have their pros and cons. This one, they're both portable. This one happens to be a little less portable because it's a little more bulky where this one feels a little flimsy, you know, in basically every department. Um, as far as like the, the functionality, this one wins the functionality because of the remapping, but that's also kind of a caveat because you have to remap every game. But I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments if there's a place where this stuff is stored and I can just recall it for every game that I wanna play. This one just works the way it's supposed to work and it feels fantastic. It feels like playing real console games. You got 12 hours of battery life with micro USB-C, you got 10 hours of battery life with uh, USB-C. Definitely made for Samsung devices uh, of the later style, and you can even use it on tablets. So that's a huge plus. As for me, I'm definitely keeping the G-Lap, man. I know it costs a small fortune, but I just love it. I love the gameplay on it. I love the ergonomics and the way it feels, build quality. And yeah, let's just put this thing back in the box. So in this competition, the G-Lap wins. I ain't trying to tell you how to run your life as far as gaming, but if you got the money, spend that bread on the G-Lap, man. But this video has been long enough, man. Thanks for hanging out with me. If you had a good time, make sure you throw those emoji hands up in the comment section and I'll see y'all. Ah, oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Follow me on Instagram, man. <laughs> Dude, you thought you was getting away with it. Follow me on Instagram, man. Anyways, I'll see y'all at the next one.
Hey, where are you going? No, 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 no. Sit back down. We got to talk about this. You didn't have a good time? All right, then. Hit the subscribe button. There you go. Reach down there. There you go. And then hit the bell because you need to know when I'm opening up more new stuff. You got to come right back here and check this stuff out. Now, don't you feel like a better human being? All right. I knew you would. All right, man. I'll see you soon. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here?